Cold doesn't negotiate. It kills quickly, drains strength, and exposes bad engineering in a single night. The Vikings knew this better than most. They didn't survive northern winters because they were tougher than everyone else. They survived because they were smarter with heat. What looks like a simple fire pit in a Viking longhouse was actually a finely tuned heating system, one that warmed homes faster and held heat longer than almost anything else in early medieval Europe. This wasn't luck. It was design. And once you understand it, you'll never look at ancient primitive homes the same way again. Let's get straight into it. The hearth was the engine, not the decoration. In Viking homes, the hearth wasn't furniture. It was infrastructure. Placed dead centre in the longhouse, it functioned like the heart of the building, pumping warmth evenly in every direction. Unlike wall-mounted fireplaces that bleed heat into the outdoors, the central hearth kept energy inside the living space where it mattered. Heat radiated outward, upward, and into every beam, bench, and body in the room. This single decision already put Viking homes ahead of many later structures. Even centuries after, poorly designed hearth placement wasted fuel and warmth. The Vikings avoided that mistake early, because they couldn't afford to learn it the hard way. The real secret wasn't the fire. It was the stone. Viking hearths were built on thick beds of dense stone, often basalt, granite, or soapstone. These weren't chosen at random. Dense stones absorb heat slowly and release it even more slowly. While the fire burned, the stones soaked up thermal energy like a battery charging. When the flames died down, the stones kept radiating warmth for hours. This meant the house didn't go cold the moment the fire weakened. Families could sleep through the night without constantly feeding wood into the flames. In a world where cutting and hauling firewood could mean death by exposure, efficiency wasn't comfort. It was survival. You can apply this exact principle today. Build a fire directly on soil and the ground steals heat. Build it on stone and the stone fights back. A simple stone-lined firebase heats faster, burns steadier, and stays warm long after the fire collapses. Shape mattered more than people realize. Most early fire pits were circular and shallow. Vikings broke that pattern. Their hearths were long and rectangular, stretching along the center axis of the house. This increased surface area, which meant more stone in contact with fire and more radiant heat spreading through the room. The long shape also allowed better control. Fires could be extended or shortened depending on weather, fuel availability, or how many people and animals were inside. This wasn't accidental. Archaeological layers show consistent rebuilding of hearths in the same elongated form, generation after generation. That's not tradition. That's proven performance. For modern survival shelters or off-grid cabins, this lesson still holds. A longer, lower heat source distributes warmth more evenly than a compact blaze. It heats bodies, not just air. You know, airflow was engineered, not just tolerated. Smoke kills, plain and simple. The Vikings, they understood that long before anyone even had words like ventilation or draft dynamics. 
So long houses were built low, with these narrow entrances and roof vents that were angled just right to shed rain and snow. Cold air would enter near the floor, flow toward the hearth, feed the fire from below, and then push smoke upward and out. This created a natural draught, all without the need for bellows, fans, or chimneys. The result? Well, it was a hotter fire with less fuel and dramatically less smoke build-up. That meant healthier lungs, clearer air, and honestly, just better heat output overall. You can actually recreate this today by feeding air to a fire from below rather than from the sides. Even a small air gap beneath a stone hearth. Well, it changes everything. The fire burns cleaner, wood lasts longer, and the heat output really jumps. Vikings didn't discover this in theory. They discovered it because the wrong setup meant coughing, blindness, or honestly, even worse. The hearth didn't work alone. Everything around it played a role, you know. Raised wooden benches line the walls of longhouses. Wood absorbs heat efficiently, then releases it slowly. Over time, these benches became warm reservoirs. People slept on them, worked on them, stayed alive on them. Even the roof beams mattered. Smoke drifting upward coated wood with a thin layer of soot, which actually helped seal gaps and improve insulation. The house slowly transformed into a thermal system, where heat was captured, shared and held. This is why Viking homes warmed faster than expected. Once the system reached equilibrium, it took less and less fuel to maintain livable temperatures. You know, it's interesting how modern builders, in their pursuit of efficiency, often overlook a crucial aspect. Central heat sources combined with heat-absorbing materials consistently outperform isolated stoves every single time. Here's where our modern instincts tend to fall short. The Vikings, well, they didn't rely on huge fires. Instead, they use smaller split logs, feeding them gradually. It's a fascinating approach, really. It's all about efficiency, isn't it? Smaller fuel pieces ignite faster, burn cleaner, and transfer heat to stone more effectively. Rather than maintaining one roaring blaze, they kept a steady bed of coals. Quite a clever method, if you ask me. They also stirred embers frequently, exposing hotter material and increasing radiant output without adding fuel. Archaeological hearth layers show fine ash and consistent coal beds, not evidence of wasteful infernos. For anyone trying this today, the lesson is simple. Think slow heat, not spectacle. Build heat into the system, not just the flame. A warm home meant more than comfort. It meant survival through injury, sickness and age. It meant children lived long enough to become warriors. It meant tools didn't crack, food didn't freeze solid and morale didn't collapse. In many ways, the hearth was more important than the sword. You don't raid, you don't trade, you don't fight if winter beats you first. This same principle played out centuries later in World War II, where logistics and thermal efficiency mattered as much as firepower in cold campaigns. Cold kills armies that ignore it. Vikings learned that lesson early. 
If you're building an off-grid shelter, a cabin, or even just a serious camp setup, Viking hearth logic still works. Use stone to store heat. Control airflow from below. Place heat centrally. Burn small, efficient fuel. Let the structure absorb warmth instead of fighting it. This isn't nostalgia. It's physics tested under brutal conditions. The Viking hearthstone system wasn't primitive. It was optimized by necessity, and it proves that real innovation doesn't always look flashy. Sometimes it looks like stone, ash and silence doing exactly what it's supposed to do. If this kind of deep, practical history is why you're here, make sure you subscribe to History HQ. Share this with anyone who respects old world engineering and survival wisdom that still works today. More breakdowns like this are coming, and you won't want to miss them.